Now, we've talked a lot about Zutara on this channel from a lot of different perspectives. We've discussed a lot of different topics. We've even discussed how Aang might react to this pairing. If you have not checked that video out, I highly recommend you do so. I think it's one of the best videos I've made on Zutara. But if you want a short summary, I believe that Aang would not react particularly well to this pairing, especially not at first. Part of this is because, well, it's hard to have a crush on someone and then not have that be reciprocated. I completely understand that, but it's also partly because Aang has become so invested in the idea that this relationship will work. It's basically a foregone conclusion for him. And this is not entirely his fault. Everyone encourages him. From the prisoners we see in episode 205, Avatar Day, to Avatar Roku himself. Everyone tells him that if he just tries his hardest to be with Katara and trusts in his romantic affections that everything will turn out alright for him. He'll get the girl, as we say. And of of course, because he's 12 and because he's the chosen one, he just laps all this up. He internalizes it. He believes that, yes, he will be in this relationship with Katara if he just keeps trying to be in this relationship. Why would he not believe he would be with Katara in the face of all this encouragement, especially because of how optimistic and Pollyanna-ish he is? But what I'm interested in, in terms of this video, is something slightly different. I'm interested in how May would react to this pairing. Would she care? How much would she care? And if she did care a lot, how would she react? Would she sit by quietly or would she try to sabotage the relationship between Zuko and Katara? Let's investigate to see if we can ascertain the truth. The relationship between Mei and Zuko is even more fraught than the relationship between Katara and Aang. Katara, at least, seems to like Aang. The question of whether she loves him romantically lingers over the show for three seasons before finally being resolved in that last scene where she kisses him out on the balcony, but... Even if it's not certain that she likes him romantically, she does at least like him as a person. She respects him and cares about him and wants to take care of him. One can't deny that they're close, but the pairing of Mei and Zuko is quite different. There are times in which they don't even seem to like each other, let alone love each other. One could say that, of course, they don't have a lot of affection between them in, say, episode 315, The Boiling Rock Part 2, after Zuko breaks May's heart by leaving. Or in the great comic trilogy that takes place after the end of Avatar, Smoke and Shadow, in which May breaks up with him ostensibly for good, after becoming furious at how much Zuko hides from her. She hates that, as she says, he loves his secrets more than her. In fact, however, the animosity between Mei and Zuko starts long before Zuko decides to leave the Fire Nation in episode 311, The Day of Black Sun Part 2. As soon as Zuko returns to the Fire Nation, he quickly discovers that he's not happy, and while he loves Mei more than anyone else there, to the point that he confesses to Sokka that she is the only person he regretted leaving in the Fire Nation. Despite this, Zuko does not treat her well. May rightly claims in episode 305, The Beach, that Zuko's temper is completely out of control. The base of the problem is that they can never really talk to each other, not about the things that matter. May knows this. She wants Zuko to talk to her, but there are times when he just can't. And there are times when he does try to talk to her, but she does not really understand what he's saying. She doesn't get it. Her experiences are that different from his. Back when they were kids, they could still relate to each other. They came from the same privileged, wealthy background. 
And they had no real systematic critiques of the Fire Nation government, for that government benefited them. That government allowed them to live these wealthy, prosperous lives. Now, this is not to say their lives were completely perfect. They both had difficult childhoods, with Mei always being told to keep quiet and not make much of a fuss, and Zuko being tormented by his sister and his cruel father. But these problems were relatively bearable. Unlike what happens to Zuko after his mother dies, for speaking out of turn in a war meeting against a general's horrifying plan, he is challenged to an Agni Kai by his own father, Ozai. Zuko refuses to fight Ozai, so Ozai burns his face and then exiles him, and then says he cannot return to the Fire Nation with his honor until he captures the Avatar, who at this point has not been seen for almost a hundred years. Initially, Zuko believes that this is the worst thing that has happened to him, not because his face was burned, but because he believes he deserves it. He believes that because his father rejects him that he is dishonored, that he is in the wrong, and the only way he can get back in the right, the only way he can get back his honor, is if he captures the Avatar. Now, what actually happens to him is quite different. He does indeed find the Avatar, but as he desperately tries to find the Avatar, he realizes that this is not what is going to make him happy. This is not going to satisfy him. He doesn't really want what he believes he wants. Gradually, he realizes that the entire moral system he has committed himself to is basically bankrupt. It's cruel and wrong. So after returning to the Fire Nation and being accepted as Ozai's heir once more, He's miserable, and eventually he rejects the Fire Nation, and he wars against the Fire Nation before finally defeating Azula and becoming the new Fire Lord and trying to usher the Fire Nation into a new era. Mei does not understand the change he has undergone. Not really. For her, he is mostly the same person he was before, and she loves him for that. At no point do we see her honestly contemplate the new person he has become. At no point do we see her try to come to grips with this. If anything, she seems confused and annoyed by this new Zuko. She doesn't understand his transformation. Their relationship is not one of closeness and intimate connection, but rather one of distance and coldness. There are a few moments when she emotes when she's with him, such as when she gets absolutely furious at him near the end of episode 305, The Beach, but they are the exceptions that prove the rule. She hardly reacts to anything, and Zuko calls her out for this. She just keeps all her feelings bottled up, like she was trained to do from childhood, so Zuko has trouble really understanding what she is feeling, and so it's hard for him to try and repair the relationship. In the context of this, it would be a bit strange for her to react very dramatically to Zutara. Would she be angry that Zuko has left her and started a relationship with this Water Tribe girl? Yes, of course. It's possible that she could shout at him or insult Katara, but it's not likely. That's not her style. That's not who she is as a person. She wouldn't react to the relationship between Zuko and Katara in the same way that Aang would. Aang would be furious. Aang would be unrestrainable. Just the idea of Zuko and Katara being together in the play is enough to make him storm out of the play and proclaim that were his chakras not blocked, he would enter the Avatar state, causing all this destruction and chaos. All of this because he did not like that the director of a bad play did not put him and Katara together. 
this is really desperate and kind of pathetic. I'm not saying I don't understand it, especially considering his age, but it does not bode well for him being able to react maturely to the relationship between Zuko and Katara. Mei is not that kind of person. She is far more restrained. She's not the kind of person who throws a scene. And indeed, she abhors the kind of people who do throw scenes. She doesn't like to express her anger overtly. Instead, she would be ice cold to Zuko whenever she found out. She wouldn't go on a rampage. She probably would not try to sabotage the relationship between Zuko and Katara. She would not hate Zuko, and she would continue to care about him, and she would try to handle the situation with grace and maturity. But it would affect her. It would affect her a lot, considering how close she has been to Zuko throughout her life, even if she would not allow others to see how it affected her. So what would she do? How would she respond to Zuko leaving her? What would be her path going forward? Personally, I think it would be best for her if she traveled the world. It did a lot of wonders for Team Avatar, did a lot of wonders for Zuko. It might help her too. It might help her try to form her own identity and come to terms with not just her relationship with Zuko, but her relationship with herself. True, she did track Team Avatar across the world, but that's different. That was a job. She didn't really take any time to relax, that we saw. She didn't take any time to just think about herself. But after the end of the war and the time that follows Avatar The Last Airbender, she would have a chance to do all that. Maybe she would find a guy who adores her. It's not like Zuko is the only person who's expressed interest in her. In the Beach episode, she was not as popular as Tai Lee, but she was popular. I think she would be happy. I think she would find someone who really loves her for her. I know it. Just like Aang would find someone who's right for him. Just because Mei couldn't be with Zuko doesn't mean she'd have to be eternally miserable. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching Avatar The Last Airbender. It is a brilliant, thoughtful, empathetic show that is so brilliant and so rich with detail and empathy and pathos that it's not hard to construct alternate scenarios like the one I've just constructed. These characters are that rich. So anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. I promise you that. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.